everyone! So today I wanted to do a bit of a movie review slash sort of a lesson in faith and God and if you are not into these type of videos then you can totally just click out of this video and a new video will be up tomorrow, something beauty or fun related or you know I think this is fun but more um, generic related. But this video is going to be about God and faith and just my love for Jesus and just I have to share this with you guys. So. I actually filmed this video in the car in my parking lot right after I saw this movie, God's Not Dead. I was so moved by the movie. This was like last week. I was so moved by the movie. I had to do a review right away. I had to tell everyone that God is not dead. He is alive. And I filmed it on my iPhone and my iPhone crashed the very next day. I couldn't believe it. I was so sad because it was like a big like 14 minute review of this movie and just how much I was filled with God's love and wonderfulness and positiveness and I wanted to uh, share it with all of you guys so much and I was so so bummed and I was kind of a little defeated about it and I was just like oh well you know maybe it just let it go but I couldn't let it go because it's literally been on my mind this is like a week and a half later it's literally still on my mind I just was so excited I was tweeting a bunch of stuff so I'm referencing my computer down there because I was tweeting and Facebooking so many things that day I was just so moved and inspired and if you want to feel inspired and moved go see God's Not Dead if you're questioning if you have questions about God religion and faith go see God's Not Dead if you just want to feel good movie go see God's Not Dead it just motivated me and inspired me and was just like everything is gonna be okay it just literally left me with that feeling like everything is okay, everything is on God's time, everything in this world is calculated by God, you know, it's just, it was so uplifting and inspiring. So I'll just give you a really quick overview about the movie. It's a movie about a philosophy college professor who asks every student to write at the beginning of his class, at the beginning of the semester, to write God, God is dead on the paper. And one kid couldn't do it, and the teacher was just like, you're like, it's basically like your funeral if you don't write this. And, he, and then the kid's like, I can't, I'm Christian. He's like, okay, well then you're going to have to prove that God is not dead. And the kid took on the challenge despite everyone telling him not to, including his own girlfriend, sacrificed his relationship. I'm not going to like spoil because I'll tell you what, the ending gave me chills up. Like the way it all wrapped up at the end, the whole movie kind of moved me and made me smile. Um, but the end just gave me chills, so I won't spoil it for you guys. I really urge you to see it. Um, but it's just a really good lesson in just, like I said, just faith. It just renews your faith and love for God and Jesus. And it was amazing that this kid did it. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's based on a story because there's a book. And I believe that that's a real story. So, um... It was, it was amazing, and while it's not a Catholic-based movie, I'm Catholic, but it was a Christian-based movie, so there was a pastor instead of a priest, but the, the same morals and philosophy and Bible verses are all there, and it was wonderful. So he has to debate, he does a series of debates with this his teacher who is an atheist, who who's denouncing God, and we find out all these interesting, there's a bunch of different characters, and they all kind of combine with each other. And one of my favorite scenes in the movie, and I'm referencing, I'm sorry, is Willie Robertson from Duck Dynasty, because I didn't know who he was. Um, and I actually saw the movie by myself, so I couldn't even ask anyone. But uh, Willie Robertson from Duck Dynasty had this quote in the movie. All this stuff is temporary. The money, fame, success, temporary. Even life is temporary. But Jesus, that's eternal. And then he goes on. As far as, as, far as praying to Jesus, my life and my whole eternity belongs to God. And I just thought that was such a powerful statement from someone who is in the limelight, from someone who's in the media, in Hollywood, who can be easily swayed with money and fame. Um, I love that he participated in this movie, and I love that he said that. Someone who has so much is like, this is all, this is all for God. This all belongs to God. None of this is... None of this really means anything. In life, it is nice to have money and nice things, but it means... It doesn't really mean anything, you know what I mean? We all have that goal of being of eternal happiness with God in heaven. And I just thought that was such a brilliant, brilliant quote and just a wonderful reminder to be like humble and to always be humble, to always stay humble because you know a lot of people pray too often pray when things are down, when their chips are down and their luck is down. They just they pray and then they forget to keep praying when things start going good and better for them. But you gotta keep giving thanks to God even more so when things are going good because he's providing you all these blessings and I just feel like prayer is so powerful in so many ways and and um, I've said this before on a video but like I've read somewhere like a quote it was something like what if you woke up tomorrow morning with 
all the things you thanked God for the night before. Meaning like people don't give thanks enough and you really, you really have to and you really need to. And I thought that was an amazing, amazing little quote and I loved that little scene in the movie. I thought it was so wonderful. So I'm just going back to some of my other posts that I, I shared that about the movie. Um, just some stuff about forgiveness, and I kind of did a whole video on that. When you don't think people deserve forgiveness, they do. Think about how Jesus forgave the Romans who crucified him and was dying on the cross. That was basically me about just saying, like, just about forgiveness and ultimately forgiving yourself. But I have talked about that as well. Just, you know, Peter denied Jesus, Judas denied Jesus, but the difference between the two is that Peter was forgiven but also forgave himself. Judas could have been forgiven but did not forgive himself and took his own life. So there is very different um, ways. Of, I like that. But this this Bible verse was in, obviously, Son of God, but also um, kind of in the movie. Okay, so the movie, God's Not Dead, and I will go to my one of my favorite Bible verses. I'll share with you in a minute, John 20. One of my favorite parts of the movie was... Um, they, sorry, I was getting a text. Um, sorry, I got a little sidetracked right there. Um, but one of the best parts about the movie was, um, you know, atheists a lot of time will argue science to debate if God exists or, you know what I mean? Like a lot of times, like Stephen Hawking, they used one of his quotes, for instance, and the professor did a quote from Stephen Hawking and it was totally stumped the, the student. And he was just like, I don't, like, I don't really know how to answer that. But then he would do some research and there was the same quote by Stephen Hawking about how like philosophy is all BS. So basically that class was BS. So he kind of like turned it around on the teacher. It was crazy. And then at the end, he's just like, well, not the very end, but one of the winning arguments was, um, why, why do you hate God? And he's just like, God's taken away everything from me. And he's like, how can you hate someone that doesn't exist? So atheists have this back and forth with science and, um, and hating God. But it's like, yeah, how can you hate someone that doesn't exist? Also, using science quotes, um, Stephen Hawking had a quote then that kind of like, was hypocritical of his, of his previous quote. So there's always conflicting thoughts in science as well. Um, Gosh, I wish I could have just like recorded the whole movie because there was a quote he used from like a mathematician. Now I can't think of what it was to kind of counteract what was said. Even when they discussed the Big Bang Theory, it's not that religion denies the Big Bang Theory or it couldn't be possible. And in the movie they touched on this and it really made me happy because it's something I've always thought or said um, was, you know, Nobody knows how God created Earth, but something had to create it. And if what they say is the Big Bang Theory of like Earth just created itself, and there was this bright light and then Earth just came about, you know, God creating the Earth is such a huge magnitude, such a large scale, that it could very well have appeared to be a bright light that just poof, it was there. Obviously, that's not, you know, God created this world and created, and you know, to the human eye, to someone like you or me, if we saw that, we would think, yeah, just a big bright light and, and the Earth appeared, but there was someone behind it and that someone was God. And the other thing was like, there was another quote. It's like, if God didn't exist, then everything is permissible. Meaning, why do you have morals? Why do atheists have morals if God doesn't exist? What, what's, why, why do you, um, you know, live a good life? You know what I mean? Like, why don't, why does everyone just go rob and kill people? And, you know, maybe those atheists do, but you know, a lot of them say they have morals and it's like, well, why then? If God doesn't, what's, what's the point? Um, another big thing is for me, I just say have faith and I know atheists hate that because they're like, you just use the faith card because it just gets you out of anything. It's not a card that I use. It's just something that I believe and I just have a lot of. So John 20, 29, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And he said this at the end of Son of God, clearly it's about the Bible, so at the end of the Bible. Um, so when he's talking to his disciples and he's like, you know, you guys have seen me, so you... You've seen the miracles, you've witnessed it, you've been with me firsthand, um, and that's why you believe. But, you know, blessed are those who have not seen and still believe, and that is people like you and me, or people who have not, I mean, I feel like I know I've experienced miracles. So, I have seen and believed, but before that, I, I didn't know, I've never had an experience right here in this world where, like, Jesus was with me, like, he's always with you, but it was just, again, anyone who's experienced a miracle in life, and not everybody does, I was talking to my dad about this the other day, and he's like, well, 
you know, I don't think a, a miracle necessarily in that sense of the word has happened to me. You know, you know, Jesus does appear to people and God does appear to people, um, but not necessarily me. And so uh, not everyone has a miracle happen to them in the sense of what you think of a miracle. But I've had actual miracles happen where it does not make any sense except for that God was with me. And, um, but I just love that quote because it's, you got, that's what faith is in a nutshell. Believing in something that you can't necessarily see. Um, but you have to just have it and just know and just know that true love, like Jesus loves you so much. Like to die, to die, be crucified and humiliated and tortured on that cross. He did that for us so that we can get to heaven that and there's that other Bible uh, verse that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That's a lot of love. Jesus died knowing you may never love him back. That's true love. And you and I just encourage you guys to learn to just explore it. Just to explore. A good way to start is to go see Son of God. I, I've admitted this before. Like, I'm not one to read the Bible. Like, I don't just sit there and study the Bible. I mean, I know verses. I know Gospels. I know readings. But and I know the teachings. But... It really does kind of hit something in you. Even someone like me who is a Catholic and Christian already, to watch it, it just, again, kind of just, it hit me so hard. Like, oh my goodness, this is, this is what life is all about. And God's Not Dead was just amazing. It's more modern, meaning it ha it's taken place today. Um, there's mod more modern situations, a couple like kind of living together, a girl. And my camera just cut off. Um, it, what I was saying is there's more modern day situations in this movie that I think a lot more people can relate to. And there's young kids in it and older people and just, it's just, it's just amazing. And there's a really great example of faith, the pastor and his friend who comes to visit, um, when they try and get down to Disneyland and their car won't start and they get a rental car and it still won't start. There's just really great lessons of faith in it as well. And I think just watching it, um, you know, just will inspire you and just, and at the end of the movie, they said to text everyone you know that God is not dead. And I was like, and I, I texted everyone I knew, but I was like, I need to make a video because I don't have all your guys' phone numbers to text you. So I figured this was the best way to say God's not dead and he's alive and he's living on the inside. And I just really encourage you, even if you weren't brought up with faith or your family may not go to church, you know, to explore it on your own. I really urge you to be independent in that sense. I was lucky enough that my dad was really into it, but my mom not wasn't always. So I didn't always go to church growing up because my mom wasn't so into church and, you know, teachings of God and stuff like that. So I had to, in high school, when I was able to drive, take myself to church. So, um, and kind of just do everything independently on my own. And still to this day, I don't have my dad or mom saying, oh, go to church, pray, you know, give thanks. You know what I mean? I, I do it on my own, but you can too. It doesn't matter your age, your religion, your background, if your family doesn't believe, like, it's not too late for you to believe and for you to be saved. And, um, you know, if you weren't baptized as a child, you know, you you weren't washed of sin because we're all born into sin. So you can still get baptized. It's never too late. You can still go get First Communion. It's never too late. You can still get confirmed in a church. It's not too late. It is never too late. And um, those are sacraments. Those are holy sacraments. I'm sorry. There's Now there's lip gloss in my, or there's hair in my lip gloss. And that just shows that nobody is perfect. Sorry this video was kind of everywhere. Um, I just felt, I had made notes about it. Actually, let me look. <laughs> I made notes that I have referenced as, um, yeah, I kind of just hit on them anyways. But I just thought it was amazing. Like I said, I made notes because I didn't want to forget because that feeling and energy I felt right after the movie, I really wanted to convey to you guys because it was so filled in me, but it's still filled in me, so I really felt like I needed to get this out there for you guys, because I do get a lot of questions about it, but um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this in some way, or feel enlightened in some way, and if nothing else, just good movie recommendations, Son of God, God's Not Dead, especially now that it is in the Lenten season, it's kind of fun to see these kind of things, and get more connected with your faith, and I think a lot of us lose sight with that throughout the year, and it's totally normal to do that, but it's nice to be renewed and refreshed with God and Jesus and things that are my core that help me get out of a really dark time in my life. It's nice to feel that rush of love again because I only had felt this amount of love and, and faith in me when I, you know, quit the adult industry, um, which is what I was in the sex industry, if you will. Sorry, I don't know if that's really the same thing, the sex industry. Only when I was able to work up the courage to really, truly, fully quit it and commit to some commit to something which is God because it wasn't even a job at the time because I literally quit unemployed 
that was a huge leap of faith and I because I felt this like love from God in me that I knew I could do it and I knew that anything and I'm telling you guys this anything is possible through him and I love you guys so much from the bottom of my heart and I just want you guys to live a really happy life I want us all to go to heaven together I hope you believe in it you know if you don't it's okay just you know try and educate just learn a little more and um and there's no judgment, no judgment from me to you if this is not your thing. And I hope you don't judge me for having my beliefs. I pray for all of you. I hope you know because I give thanks for all my blessings. And a lot of that is in part to you guys, most of it, all of it right now, basically. And um, I really just pray to God that you guys find the happiness that you guys have been able to provide me and that you are able to achieve the dreams that I have been able to achieve because of you guys, which is entertaining people. And... Um, I feel like I need to use this platform not only for entertainment and craziness and silliness and beauty and superficiality, but also for something real and wonderful, and that's God. So I love you guys. I'm going to go ahead and go, and until next time, here are my kisses, my little baby fishes. Bye, guys.